Oh, check it, check it, check it, check it. Uh, all right, we're live. Second live, second live. Yesterday I did my first one. This is the second one, and I literally, I plan on doing these every single day. Now, if I miss a day, take it easy on me. But anyhow, welcome. This is uh, this is this is not new for me because I don't know if you're familiar with the app Periscope. A couple of years ago, well, about 2015, when Periscope first dropped, I used to scope every single day multiple times a day i gathered a, or garnered a great following of people became friends with many of those people so going live isn't new for me so i'm comfortable with going live but now it's just a different it's, it's it's a different delivery in terms of what it is that i'm sharing what it is that i that i feel should be put into the not into the world not something general is you know just saying i want to put it into the world but put into the minds of people who have one objective and one objective only to be happier human beings. And the reason why I say that one objective is because that's an objective that if you focus on that, takes care of everything else. I had a mentor early on who used to say, it doesn't take much for life change. A few things will take care of everything else. And that's that's transferable to any aspect, any facet of life. A few simple anchors. And when I when I mean by anchors are those things that that carry more weight than the than the trivial, minuscule silly things that we like to put a lot of focus on but a few a few important things will indeed take care of a lot of nonsense in life in business in relationships just in general a few things usually take care of a lot of nuances and so forth that we put too much time and attention on but anyhow kevin madison is my name for those of you who have never seen me before this is me OK, I'm a performance and perspective coach. And all I do is one thing only. I teach people how to see themselves correctly and think of themselves uncritically that lead to genuine happiness. Genuine happiness is is my deal. That's what I focus on. The reason I focus on it is because, again, like I said, just a few seconds ago, it. It creates change and it elevates and the floor rises in every aspect of your life when you're genuinely happy. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about today with regard to genuine happiness. Genuine happiness takes work. Yesterday I covered, you know, a, a, a little bit about what it takes or what happiness is a result of, which is discipline and how commitment creates contrast for you to see exactly where your focus and attention should be allocated with regard to what it is that you want to achieve. Today, I want to expand on that just a little bit more because I feel that as a society, at least I wasn't in school coming up in high school, even college, I was not taught how to be happy. Or how to be a happier person because I had a pretty good upbringing saw some terrible things I grew up in the hood but as far as the rearing and what my parents gave us my brothers and I we had a good life we just grew up in an environment that taught us that life can suck for a lot of people and life can be dangerous but we had that beautiful upbringing of of contrast because my parents were committed to giving us a scope of the world as it is not how it's you know with, with rose colored lenses like my dad, I remember my mom, I'm digressing, but let me just give you a little taste of who I am and why I do what I do and how I do it, or the reason behind how and why I do what I do. My dad, I remember arguments between my mother and my father. My dad used to say, my mom used to want to move to a suburb that was like 15 minutes outside of where we lived, right, which was right in the heart of the city, like on one of the worst sides of town. My mom had a very good job. My dad had a very good job. But I remember vividly arguments between them two where my dad would say, my kids ain't growing up out there where they don't know what, what well, I can't say it. This is my channel where they don't know what shit, ha what, what, what shit's happening or they don't know what time it is. They don't know what kind of shit is in the world. I remember him saying those kind of things to my mother, like arguing, like top of the lungs. They never fought, but arguing. Oh, they did that about stuff like this. Like my dad would say, I don't want them not knowing what kind of shit is in the world i don't want them knowing or not knowing shit about the world that's what he would say i don't want them knowing i don't i want my kids to know and have an idea of what life is like from the lowest of the low perspective which is what we lived around to being educated with people who own the 49ers people who had businesses and built malls like i went we went to school my all my brothers and i went to schools with people or went to a school with people who literally are like heavyweights as far as success and stature and, and significance in the world of of business and politics like we went to one of those kind of schools we just lived in the hood so it gave us contrast because my mom well my dad was committed to it but my mom got on board and even though she didn't want to be there she knew that 
okay, as a man raising black kids in the inner city and him having the kind of job that he had, which was working with disadvantaged black youth or black kids period in the projects in our city, he had a different perspective versus my mom having a perspective from working um, at General Motors, being at the top of the food chain and being one of the only black women in the position that she held. She was coming from a straight, I'm successful, we can move out there, we can, we can live good. My dad was like, okay, we can live good still, but my, we're gonna stay right here. And I'll tell you what, best decision I feel now growing up, because I know, you know when I was a kid, I used to be like, dang, why can't we like go and move in the suburbs, have a dope crib, and now that I'm older, I wouldn't have wanted that. I wouldn't wanted that. I wouldn't want it any other way. But anyhow, let me give this to you, expanding on what it is that I shared yesterday. Genuine happiness, when you make that the objective of your life, the floor rises. And let me explain that. What I mean by the floor rising is that everything that you feel you want, everything that you, you think you want comes as a result and everything that you, that you feel would make you happy everything is contained and comes by way of people in some shape or form okay now follow me what is the thing that attracts people no matter what color age doctrine they believe in whatever beliefs that they carry what's the one thing that speaks to them in a way that makes them feel good happiness Genuine happiness, no, not the fake shit, not the stuff that, you know, where you can tell someone's giving you a fake smile or being fake, kind. No, no, I'm talking about genuinely happy. Now, how do you get there? Now, that's another video. How do you get there? But let me just tell you why genuine happiness should be the objective, because it brings or it draws unto you the people who have all the money, who have all the relationships and all the opportunity that you need to bring fulfillment to your life. And see, it comes in different shapes and forms for different people. You know, you may not, you may not value making a lot of money, but you need it, see? And as I teach with, with regard to being genuinely happy, I teach that you can't say that money doesn't make you happy. You can't say that being in optimal health isn't part of being happy. You can't say that having your mind and having the clarity of mind to, to, to nurture confidence doesn't make you happy. See, for me and how I teach is that when you, when you commit yourself and you practice the discipline of what it takes or you practice the disciplines and what it takes to be genuinely happy, see, what happens is it forces you to behave differently. It forces you to talk differently. It forces you to respond to life differently. And in, in doing so, what happens is people take notice who also seek and want the same thing that you have, that you embody, which is genuine happiness. When a person sees a happy human being, why do you, why do you think people remember them? Think about it in your own life. When you meet somebody who's genuinely happy, why do you remember them? because they leave an indelible impact on how you feel. They make you feel good because they're genuinely happy. You, you can't help, it matters not if they're physical attraction or, or, or their physical, physical attractor factor, that has nothing to do with it. It helps you know, if they're attractive and genuinely happy, but it supersedes even being physically attractive when a person is genuinely happy. When you're genuinely happy, I'm telling you, you impact and you, you allow yourself to communicate with people with a language that isn't spoken by most people. Most people don't walk around happy. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't need to tell you. You can literally look in your own life when you walk past people or when you engage with people. Whitney, what's up? Vanessa, what's up? Uh, when you walk past people and when you engage people on a normal day-to-day -day basis, even going into the grocery store or going into any kind of retail store and hold the door for someone, most people will literally just simply, you know, either expect it, don't say nothing, or their thank you is half-assed. Oh, thanks like with a fake smile, because even though that's become a norm, just think about it though. Most people don't even engage and interact with the world that we live in happily, because most people in their mind and the confines of their mind are anchored to something that keeps them feeling as if life ain't meant to be happy. Do you know we live in a society where we, we, we obsess over the things that we feel make us happy, but in all actuality do not. We live in a society that says you can't be happy unless you got big money, unless you got uh, a, a certain kind of car, unless you live in a certain kind of neighborhood. Now look, I like nice things, folks. I believe that everybody should have and enjoy nice things. Just don't let those nice things have you. 
but they do not define happiness. You cannot happiness, genuine happiness now that I'm talking, genuine happiness is not anchored to anything outside yourself. Genuine happiness is anchored from your own core, it comes from within to whereas you have defined what it is that brings fulfillment to your life and you wake up every day in the knowing and in the doing and pursuing that. That's what creates happiness because the thing is, is that happiness, genuine happiness, genuine happiness takes work. You see, happiness that most people, how most people define it is easy because most people look at happiness as being in the moment, smiling and enjoying something that's fun or something that's, that's jovial and, and lighthearted. That ain't happiness. That's episodic happiness. Those are good moments, but genuine happiness, see, no, see, genuine happiness is when you're able to awaken to every single day. And even though it may be calamity around you, it may be confusion and it just may be lugubrious that you waking up in a situ you're waking up in a situation that you don't even want to be in. Genuine happiness pulls you through because you now come from a place. Your happiness comes from a place that is based on a vision, that is based on the acts that you're able to do in that day that lead you and keep you in alignment with what it is that you ultimately want, that brings unto you the people that do have the opportunities to get you out of that sucky situation, the people that do have the money that will give you an opportunity to change your environment, to change your situation, the people who do have the relationships that bring fulfillment and that bring a, a, a sense of, of belonging to your life that otherwise you wouldn't be able to have because genuine happiness allows you or makes you focus on those things that bring significance and importance to your life. And when you're able to live like that, you attract people who also want the same thing. You cannot tell me that you yourself do not desire to be happier to the point where you wake up every single day knowing you're doing something that you have created in your mind that you want to do that brings fulfillment. You've meticulously selected and you know by in, in detail exactly what you want to do. And you operate with this sense of of, of genuineness and gratitude and happiness from within that makes people look at you and say, what the hell are you on? You ever been around a person like that? Think about it. When a person is so happy, like what the hell, what are you drinking? I'll have what he's having or I'll have what she's having. Guess what? You just caught a glimpse of someone being genuinely happy and you want some of it. We are all, all searching and, and in pursuit of happiness genuine happiness on not this episodic social media situational stuff so let me just recap what i said yesterday then i'm going to close this video down because i'm going to come back every single day it's it's like this commit to being genuinely happy because commitment creates contrast commitment means commitment allows you to see okay hey i don't need to do that anymore i don't need to fool with those people i don't need to engage in that kind of activity i don't need to listen to these kind of words or these kind of messages I need to literally divert and, and allocate my attention to this or to these kind of people. Genuine happiness will allow you to say, you know what, I'm bullshitting right now and let me get to what it is that will allow me to earn the money to change my situation. Genuine happiness will force you to look at your finances and get them in order because you cannot be genuinely happy without having dough. I'm not saying that you need a lot of money. Now, let me make sure that I clarify. You don't need a lot of money to be happy, but you need to have a substantial amount in order to take care of yourself and give yourself options. You are not meant to live in this life and, and, and experience what it means to be a human being struggling every day. Okay, we live on an economic planet. That's one thing that I've taken from Grant Cardone that he says that's spot on. We live on an economic planet. Whether you like money or not, you need it. And the more of it that you have, the more options that you're able to exercise, the more things that you're able to be benevolent toward and give to and, and, and contribute to. So happiness, genuine happiness does incorporate money. It does incorporate having people in your life, the right people that nurture you and, and, and give you the kind of relationships that make you proud to say, that's my friend. That's my homeboy. That's my homegirl. Look, folks, I'm teaching you genuine happiness because it's something that I worked on for myself. Any of my clients that have ever worked with me will tell you. They know how to do their business. They know how to do and, 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 and perform on their jobs. They know how to do and perform on the field or on the basketball courts. But look, everything hinges and swings on how you feel. You cannot be the best athlete feeling like crap. You cannot be the best real estate broker. You cannot be the best marketer. You cannot be the best executive. You cannot be the best anything if you don't feel good. If in the confines of your mind, your happiness is non-existent, you confront but how long can you actually front before it breaks you down? You cannot. So that's why my whole focus is in my objective and in my own life and teaching people 
is how to become genuinely happy because it forces you to get all the affairs in order in your life that allow you to live a fulfilled life. Please hear me. Now, let me know. I can, I can see a couple of people here, but I'm doing this more so for people who watch later after the last session. But for those of you who are here, does this make sense to you? Like, is everything that I'm saying making sense? Let me know, because if it is, then it just inspires me and motivates me to continue doing so. I'm going to do it anyway, but I just like the feedback. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> anyway, little, 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 um, little, little, uh, I should say, um, ego feeding, if you will, you know what I'm saying? And all of us, all of us, all of us like to have our, our ego filled or, or, or fed, not, not too much. You know, a lot of people just, you know, my girl, Whitney, what's up girl, Whitney, what's happening? Um, but all of us, and we do need our egos filled. See people, that's another thing. I'm going to digress, but I'm going to share something with you. Now I'm going to wrap it up, but people have it misconstrued that you're gonna, <laughs> yeah, Whitney. People have misconstrued that ego is a bad thing. You know, ego is actually a beautiful thing. Ego is a beautiful, ego is a beautiful thing when you understand what it is. And I'm not gonna tell you, I want you to go look it up yourself. Look at the actual definition of ego. And you tell me where in the hell, most people have never done that, they just hear it and think that, oh, he, he's full of ego. It just automatically relegate that, it, that it's a bad thing no no go look at go look at, look up ego in the dictionary the actual meaning of ego and you'll see that no actually wow ego is damn okay again change in perspective and that's why that's that's why i'm a perspective and performance coach because if you can see life differently you can live it differently period genuine happiness is the objective folks be committed because commitment creates contrast and once you once you commit to it now now be disciplined to stay the course. It takes discipline to get to genuine happiness. It doesn't take you just wanting. You know, you can be a happy person, or I mean, you can be a good person, a nice person, a kind person, religious person, spiritual person. That does not warrant you happiness. Being disciplined warrants happiness. But you gotta commit first. You gotta commit to say, you know what? What my objective is every single day is to be happier. Once you make that decision, get disciplined because now it's gonna take work, but it's work worth doing. Now, what I've done is over the past, what, nearly 20 years now, I cannot believe I'm saying that because I remember the day, I remember the time of my life that I was in when I created the, when I, when I created this, 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 this image of myself, I was working at General Motors, 22 years old. I created this image of myself of what I wanted to be like, because that's when I also got involved in personal development. So I started to learn how to see myself in the manner that I wanted to be. But it was around that age of 22 after being at General Motors for four years, I remember making the decision. It was on a Friday. And I remember looking up at the turnstile. The light was red because that signified you couldn't leave until the clock struck seven o'clock, seven a.m. till you could leave. And I remember saying to myself, I ain't coming back because every single one of these cats around me are twice, three times my age. They don't look happy. And the only time they are happy is when they're leaving. And I'm like, they've been here 20, 30 years, man. I didn't want that. And I knew I wasn't coming back. That's how I quit my job. Now I could have did it differently. I really could have, but that's how I quit my job. I looked up at turnstile. I'm talking about like, there, there's no, there's no extras. I didn't give a notification. Like that's how I quit working at General Motors for folks. I don't think I ever told people that. It was the most irresponsible thing I'd done because I could have done it a little bit better and a little bit more responsibly. But I, at that moment, I was just like, yo, I ain't, I ain't feeling this. I had already been bitten by the entrepreneurial bug and I was just ready for change. I was ready. So on that day, I quit. It was the same year my older brother got married. That's what I remember vividly because I remember having like one check before he got married. I was like, I'll be straight. And then I'm an entrepreneur. I'll be all right. It was two long years after I quit that I was like, yo, did I make a mistake? Anyway, I'm digressing too much, but check this out. I made the decision at 22 and I said, I want to be happy because I was making good dough at General Motors at 22, making 50, 60 G's a year. I was straight living at home. I was straight. But I said to myself, I want to be happy. And the reason why I said that, because my mentor, early mentor of mine, he said, if you want to be happy, study happiness. I had never heard that. I had never heard that before. My parents were great parents. My parents were educated, but they didn't tell me stuff like that. When he said, if you desire, if you want to be happy, study happiness. I never forgot that. 
and my study and practice of how to be happier began at that age. Now, it's been nearly two decades since then, and I've evolved. I've learned so much about myself, how to see myself, how to think of myself. That's the main contributing factor to your genuine happiness, folks. I was committed and I allowed myself to be committed, but I was disciplined to stay the course. It's easy to commit for a few days. Anybody can commit. Like at the beginning of the year, most people do commit to going to the gym. It's the discipline to stay. And that's how it was for me in being happier. I wanted to be happier. And even though I was broke on many of occasions, since that time quitting, I knew that my focus, my discipline would keep me being happier. The focus and the objective was to be happier. Why? Because if I kept the attitude of such a human being who was genuinely happy, I knew that it would only be a matter of time before I met this person, this person, that person who would bring the money, the opportunity, the relationships that I would need to bring fulfillment to my own life. So anyway, what I've done since then is compiled so many of my own personal journals that have all the ideas and practices and things that I've gone through and things that I've experienced to bring me to this point to be able to teach and share with people. And I've created a program, a training program called A Happier Human Being. This will be my signature program that rides out until I check out of here because it's, it's so doggone relevant. It's so relevant. Any human being sucking oxygen, whether you got the bags and you got money or you still struggling, listen to me. When you're happier, everything is elevated. And when you ain't going, when life ain't going so rough or so, so good and it's rough for you, and I don't say ain't for lack of grammar, just emphasis. When life ain't going so good for you, guess what happiness can do? Happiness will pull you through like no other. When you get genuine happiness, episodic happiness flees. Social media happiness, you know damn well that flees. That goes as soon as you pass, pass a picture or image or post. But genuine happiness will pull you through. That's all I teach in the brand new program called A Happier Human Being. And now listen, this is what I also have. If you look in the comments, there will be a link to the brand new group that I'm creating. Free group, there's nothing to buy with the group. But just join because that's where I'm going to continue the conversation and go in depth in teaching people how to be genuinely happier. Now the course itself, the open enrollment for the course, it's, it's open right now. The course doesn't start for another two weeks. But you can learn all about that by going to my website, kevingmadison.com. You can see a happier human being training. But for you right now, join the brand new group. The link will be in the comments below if it isn't already. Join the group, a happier human being, because I'm telling you, I'm going to drop so much stuff. It's going to be a totally different approach and divergent approach from what most people are teaching you as far as how to get money and how to create happiness in your life, how to have the things that you want. I'm coming from a whole different angle. Ain't nobody doing or teaching it the way that I am because nobody has lived and experienced the things that I've experienced to the point where uh, they've been able to codify and make it so that I now know exactly what I did. I can't, you know, I can't promise you anything. I won't do that, but I can at least give you the thoughts, the processes and the ideas that I chewed on, that I pondered on and then applied in my own life that made the biggest difference in teaching you how to be genuinely happier. I tell you what. It's like the best investment that you can make because if I teach you how to be genuinely happy, I have a friend for life. Life. I have a friend for life who will then go on to be successful and be able to do things, extraordinary things in their own life. And guess what? I get to be a part of that. See, that's big stuff. So check it out. The link will be in the comments. If it isn't already, join the free group. And if you want to check out the training and get an idea of what it's about in detail, Go to kevingmadison.com and look for a happier human being training. That's all I got for you today. I've been on 23 minutes. Dang, I was only going to be on there for 10. Wow. Appreciate y'all. Stay G. Do -do 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 -do.